me say a little something. I am currently the chair of the LGBT caucus in the New York City Council. And Corey was the former chair. And we have Danny, who is the chair of education, who's been doing so much for LGBTQ youth. But today, as we talk about ensuring that our history is not invisible, I think the steps you took years ago was to ensure that we were not invisible. So we're gonna out our history, in addition to outing ourselves, and making sure that our history is documented. So thank you for taking that first step so many years ago uh, to ensure what became our movement and our rights that we have today, uh, including the right for someone to marry and adopt a child, a same-sex couple to do that. And um, it's, it's, uh, we are working, the LGBT caucus have put out a statement, we want this to get landmarked, and landmark status can be given to significant uh, places that have contributed to our history. So we think that this is very much worthy of landmark status, and we hope that that will happen soon. Corey. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you to, to our wonderful chair, uh, Rosie Mendez. Uh, and I think uh, State Senator Hoylman said it really well. You guys are the, the Rosa Parks of our movement, and it's such a wonderful day uh, to be here today. Uh, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, Brad's right, you are well preserved. And uh, I was born in 1982. So uh, the work that you all did uh, predated my existence. Uh, and when I was a 15 year old closeted uh, young man in Massachusetts, and I was despondent and suicidal and depressed and didn't know what I was gonna do with my life, um, what actually got me involved with activism and feeling comfortable coming out was going online at the time with a dial-up modem uh, and looking at what LGBT history was and that there was a history and that there were people that uh, had really done significant things and were living productive, happy, wonderful lives. And that all happened because of what started here at the corner of Waverly Place and West 10th Street here at Julius. So um, I wanted to, to thank Randy and thank Dick uh, for your contributions. Uh, before I hand it over to uh, the Queen of Queens, Danny Drum, uh, I, I want to uh, first present this uh, to Dick. This is for you, it's a proclamation from the city council. Randy, we have yours. The frame wasn't done yet, so we're gonna get it to you. And then this one is for uh, a commemoration for Sippin Day, for the establishment yeah. itself, uh, for Julius, uh, commemorating what happened. And, and, and let me just finish, finish with this. There is really no excuse that it's not landmarked already. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. There is no excuse. Last year, the mayor, uh, we're in a historic district, but last year, the mayor in Pride Month uh, announced that the Landmarks Preservation Commission was going to be given an individual landmark status to Stonewall because of its cultural uh, and historic significance. I hope that in the next two months, we get a similar announcement from the administration and from the LPC chair that Julius will receive the same honor this year, and that will be another big day to celebrate. So thank you all very, very much. Randy, we're gonna get you your proclamation too. And and the Queen of Queens, the wonderful, amazing. I like Danny that Trump. title, you know. <laughs> Hope it's fitting. Anyway, um, it's great to be here uh, on this occasion. And let me just say to you, this bar was old before it was old, right? Because I used to come to this bar in 1973. It was one of the first bars that I ever came to, and I would go between here and the Ninth Circle and the Firehouse. And I would run that way all the way around like this and this and that. And it was great to be able to have Julius is here for so many years. And I want to thank Ken also for the work that you're doing in terms of getting things on the historic national landmark. Uh, we're working on Gene Manfred's house in Flushing, in Queens. So they're going to go beyond the borough of Manhattan. And we're looking at many places that we want to preserve. And it's so vitally important because what I want to do as chair of the Education Committee is educate our youth to our history. Not only our LGBT youth, but all youth should have an idea of the struggle. When, when these guys did this, when Randy and Dick did this, we were on the list of mental disorders, right? 
you could be arrested for congregating in a bar together. People cannot forget that because those who forget it are doomed to repeat it and we cannot allow that to happen. For example, a school in my district, a Catholic school in my district, recently sent out a letter to the parents telling them uh, that they do not want anybody over the age of 18 or any same-sex couples to attend the senior prom. So, you know, those are our most vulnerable people, the young people, okay? And we've heard so many stories about young people committing suicide, but imagine receiving that letter and getting asked to take it home to your mother or father. But they can also go to the New York Times and they can read this story here and maybe they'll hear about what happened and the struggle that people had and how we continue to live our lives despite the obstacles that were put in front of us. So I am a big believer in preservation. I'm a big believer in teaching LGBT history to our youth. And I just want to thank everyone for their involvement here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the, the New York City LGBT Historic Sites Project, we recently wrote and uh, researched the nomination of Julius's to the National Register. And first let me thank Helen Buford, who's the owner of the bar, who actually really Yay! helped us. And has, and has kept Wonderful. Julius's as authentic as it ever has been. Yes. So thank you, and I also want to thank uh, Alan Wasserman, who's the owner of the building, because without uh, his consent, we could not have done the nomination. Wonderful. So I want to thank them, and thank hopefully you. they'll be cooperating with the actual local landmark designation. So, with Julius's bar, on, hopefully on the National Register, of the more than 87,000 sites listed on the register, there are only a handful related to LGBT history. Only up until a few years ago, Stonewall was the sole individual a National Register site. And as you know, National Register listing is the honorific listing and the registry uh, controlled by the National Park Service and federal government. So having that history legitimized and recognized on the National Register makes our history, LGBT history, stand next to American history and culture, which it is. So on that note, I want to uh, introduce Joshua Laird, who's Commissioner of the Parks, uh, National Parks of New York Harbor, who hopefully will be making an announcement to us today. Hopefully. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, what an incredible day. You know, the events of 50 years ago um, were not the beginning and certainly not the end of the LB LGBT civil rights movement, but they were, it was a watershed moment, significant enough that. I'm really proud to announce today that as of yesterday, April 20th, Julius's has been added to the National Register. Woo!